this this is the note on the carbon fiber um, oh excuse me uh, some of you may remember it <laughs> it was a, a week or two ago that we did it apologies for the delay um, I've been wanting to get this up and, up and together pretty quick but anyway I'm in workbench what I'm gonna do is go relatively quick because you can hit pause and we can cover quite a lot and uh, right so let's just kick off so what I've done is I've dragged and dropped my mechanical APDL if you remember we're gonna work directly in there I'm, I've right clicked and I've clicked open mechanical APDL to open it up and in true Blue Peter fashion I've gone into mechanical APDL and when it opens this is what we get I'm going to expand my uh, preprocessor I'm going to expand my element type I'm going to add edit remove and I'm going to add a let's have a look I'm not doing structural anymore we're moving away from structural beams pipes solids yeah yeah shells now if you remember what we want to do is we actually want to have a surface deficient definitive difference then what we want to do we want to offer an expansion in between each one so in essence we're creating layers which is the important thing about this so I'm going to click apply and then close well actually click cancel right so from there um, what I'm going to do is go to options now uh, conventionally what it will do at first is it will consider just one element or an element layer storage so if you look here it says bottom first and top last I can consider different elements to it I can minimize I can prioritize the competition that's going on between it I can just look at individual points and look at the shearing that's occurring so I'm gonna drop it I'm gonna go all layers plus middle so I'm gonna go everything So, um, I could go all layers in the middle, but that will add further comp uh, computation to it. So I'll just stay with all layers in this case. I'll click OK, and that's now my element type set and defined and all good and all set up. Right, the next thing I need to do is I need to build up my material models. So I'll go on material properties, and I'm going to go on material models. Right, we're going to have two types if you remember first one that we're going to do is we're going to set up the um, structural integrity of the carbon fiber so I'm going to go structural I'm going to go linear I'm going to go elastic I'm going to go uh, iso iso whoop, no, orthotropic because don't forget we have different components in each element of states so uh, the first one I'm going to set up now I in case you don't know I do have the notes here that I'm simply just copying the material straight from. So there, there. So it was 85,000 psi. Not 85,000. <laughs> what am I talking about? Uh, let me go copy. Right. So now we'll, our Poisson's ratio in this case is 0 0.29, 0 0.29. 0 0.29 it's over each element for the states apologies just got interrupted anyway so now we're going to go 0 0.6 0 0.06 and 0 0.06 and 0 0.06 now we have all our Gaussians we have everything that we need for that I'm going to click OK the next thing I need from here is a density now the density of the carbon is 2200 again this is me putting numbers straight in you would need to confirm these numbers don't just presume that it's right um, reason I do this is because it does make you look does make you consider so I'm gonna go for a new material model because don't forget we're going for two sets so I'll go material definition of ID of two we're gonna go isotropic and we're gonna go 6.9 e to the power of 10 and that's our Young's modulus and then we're going to go 0 0.31 for the Poisson's ratio on this aluminium alloy so that in its state is purely set up that is all sorted out now what we need to do is we need to build up our layer sets if you remember so let's close that and then let's go to um, so look preprocessors sections uh, sections 
shells, layup, and add an edit. So I'm going to add a layer, add a layer. So we now have three sets. How's it offsetting? Now, if you remember, this is the, the, the issue that was there. So how is it offsetting? We can either go from top plane, bottom plane. Uh, we'll offset from, in fact, for this, let's offset from the top plane. Because then, those of you who are in the, um, in the uh, lesson will know that the issue was when we clicked on it, it seemed to gravitate midair, which can be a little bit confusing sometimes. So what I'll do is I'm going to set my ID to 2. So I've now got that set, and my first set I'm going to set to one millimeter, 0 0.001. Um, just for giggles, let's set that to 90 degrees. Now you'll see here, Pictionary view of, it's not the best, but it gives us um, an orientation of how this material is being considered. So that orientation will help in what we do. Um, again, on the lower, 0 0.001. And then above, we're going to go 0 0.02. This now confirms our carbon fiber, our aluminium, our carbon fiber. So we have the, the sandwich layup of what we talked about in the notes. The only reason I don't really cover the notes as too much is because it gives, well, it, 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 it makes you want to come to the lesson. Right, so if I click OK, that's me now. I have my... Um, element set up, I have my layer set up, I am, I'm looking good, I'm in a good state, I'm in a good session. Right, so let's drop that back down, and then let's go to modeling, create area. So where are we? Modeling, create area, uh, rectangle by dimension, I think it is. So we're going to go minus 0 0.02, tab, 0 0.02, minus minus 0 0.02 0 0.02 right so we're in a good state now so if I click OK boom we've got our target area right guys so we've now got our top top layer set uh, the next thing that we really need to do is we need to mesh it because if I go to down the view we've got isometric view that is what we got we've got <laughs> we've got a rectangle yeah I know not the best, but we've got a rectangle. So let's bring that back down. We're going to go to meshing. So you should notice now what I'm actually doing is I'm working down the actual list. Uh, sometimes I'll need, need stuff, sometimes I will not. And it just depends as to what your task is. So I'm going to go meshing tool. Right, now in the notes, we did this really flimsy mesh. Uh, it just wasn't the best. What I want is as much accuracy as I can get. So I'm going to go crazy. Crazy! I'm going to um, go right up to a fine point and it's one. What it refers to is one sect, one division per sizing. And uh, God, I can't remember what the actual division is over. Anyway, so we're into fine. I can't remember what the other one is. So what I'm going to do is come down. If you remember, shape, I've got quads, tries, free or mapped. Um, I'll always, I'll always agree with Justin on this. Quads are f far superior in this type of application. If it was a triangle, if it was a triangular base structure, then fine. But Justin, if if you've been sat in his sessions, if you listen to what he talks about with this structure, you do kind of come away and go, yeah, you know, I understand what he's saying because he's talking sense. It does make a difference. That's me going on a rant, but rant over. So let's go mesh. Let's go pick all, boom. Right, so you look there, I've got this nice division down. Could be better, but for what I've got, I think that will do it. Now, the other thing that we you'll notice is after I've meshed, you can look and go, well, where the hell is it? Don't forget, this. you're best, you're best seeing this as kind of like a, um, uh, a graph making tool so in other words the mesh isn't shown for this I'm gonna press alt whoops or is it control oh, it's control I always get this mixed up I'm gonna press control right mouse button and just flip this up like this so let's zoom it in 
let's go plots plot controls style edges and options oh shit size and shape sorry now under your size and shape what you'll see is define uh, display elements turned off now if I turn the elements on and then click apply and then OK look at what we got so if I just if I just move up oh, and got uh, control bring this up now that is that is our um, carbon fiber now what you'll see upper layer here carbon lower here the be, 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 lower area here also carbon what we got here is the aluminium um, sandwich structure right so is that almost it that is almost it but it's not quite so let's just bring it back up we've got this model set we've got everything set up right now it's looking really good feeling really good so I'm gonna save that so I've just hit save everything's set for my, my analysis that's been saved now keep in mind what it where it's actually been saved is here which is great for us because it's then being deposited to the same library set that we had before so what I'll do is bring it back and let's go to loads define loads apply structural displacement on lines now you remember before we were clicking and it was appearing down here if I click here and here this is because I controlled the offset keep in mind what I'm looking at is a meshing procedure it's nothing more than just a meshing procedure so I'm gonna click OK and it's asking me for my de degree of freedom uh, degree of freedom of all now I'm saying this degree of freedom zero because in essence I'm fixing it in place so look at these markers we've done it happy days we are fixed in place right so let's go into the next bit now I always forget what um, force I put onto it Apologies, I forgot what force I put on. Ah, minus, um, so look, minus 2,500 newtons. I think it was a force as well, yes. So what we're going to do is force on nodes. Now I'm going on nodes because I can pick individual nodes. So I tell you what, let's do something a little bit more different. Let's go edge, edge, and mid. So I'm just going to pick here. And then another one over here. Let's really look at this under um, a lot of attacking. So I'm going to click OK. Now what it says is, OK, so what type of moment are you talking about? Is it And, and which way is it moving? thing is with this is we don't have a lot of uh, vector operations. So once you're on a point, you're always using components. Now those of you who have been in my sessions will realize that I always say, oh, I'd rather like to use components purely because I've got used to using this and uh, there's nothing wrong with doing it either way but it's just because I prefer doing it this way um, uh, I think I'm getting old <laughs> so okay let's go on to Z so I'm gonna drop it to Z and I'm gonna go minus because look at the uh, component moving upwards so I'm going down minus 2500 newtons click apply or you can either click apply or OK because if you click apply it will keep in the operational tool if I click OK it will take the last command apply it and then shut this down so I'll just click OK and we look there right if you've not done already make sure you hit save because if this fails if you by the way you make a mistake you start again um, you can mess around with deleting the nodes and deleting a lot of things granted but um, if I was you I would just start again it makes life easier for yourself and everything right so the last thing that we've not done is we've not told it what study we're doing. So let's go per preferences. I'm going to go structural, then click OK. I'm going to go solution, solve, current LS, and watch this. Three, two, one. Look at that. Look at that. This just shows the power that is in ANSYS. It's crazy. It's crazy. OK. So that's a full carbon fiber simulation set up 
I'm able to analyze it for stress, able to analyze it for shearing, because don't forget, in this case, shearing is our biggest thing that we've got to consider. So I'm going to go um, contour plot, I'm going to go nodal solution. So I'm looking at the nodes, I'm looking at what's happening there. Um, we can do all sorts. So let's look at stress, because obviously what we actually really need to consider is the ability of shearing that's occurring because obviously delamination is going to be the first failure port of this happening so uh, obviously the big one that we're going to be talking about is the XY so I click on XY and then OK now look at that now this is really interesting I, I, well I find it interesting sod you all I find it interesting right so if I spin it By the way, that's me pressing control and right mouse button. Look at this. What do you see? Got major points of deformation. Now, the reason I put more points on is because it, it doesn't make it black and white. It's not straightforward. But look. Shearing, that's occurring. It's actually occurring because of the aluminium. Basically, the aluminium should not be really connected. The aluminium is trying to shear more than the actual carbon fibre. The carbon fibre is... Now, this will purely be down... Excuse me. This would purely be down to the elasticity of the um, carbon. Everything's on the carbon at this point. It would still stay contacted, but you do look and you realise that what it's actually doing for maximum compression and tension, it is trying to shear but uh, the carbon holds its own. Now this purely comes down to that carbon side, but let's take a look at the other components. So let's go YZ. Now these here, ah, now because I've hit it in multiple points, we're gonna get some interesting ones. Now look at that. We're at a red point, we are maximum right up the edges here. Uh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, that's not good, look at that. So you look here, what we actually get here is where the carbon can no longer hold it. We've actually got shearing occurring here. It's concentrated to these areas, not the best. And that's in the YZ, so Y and Z. So it's actually moving in this direction along the Y component and the Z component. So let's, let's look at the XZ component. Yeah, it, it's most activity occurs around that uh, Z component. But it does attend to attempt to, uh, if you will, deflect outside this way as well. So it's not the best result that we'd be hoping for. It's not the best ideal thing that we'd be hoping for. But it is a result that we're talking about. So let me just go to um, let's have a look at overall. No, I'm not going to go stress because it's not really stress that we're interested in. Let's go displacement vector of sum. So this is everything. Oh, look at that. So if I go underneath. So when it when it when it occurs, we have a deflection outside well, here and here. These deflections. Yeah, these deflections are the maximum, so it is at the point there is a good, strong um, suggestion that shearing may occur after this potential hit. So, hmm, I mean, ideally, you wouldn't really want to connect it, but so I mean, this would this would strengthen the argument why people would tend to use something like a honeycomb-based structure. Um, to replace this further, what you could do is find the uh, Young's modulus acting in the three components, then Poisson's ratio for three components, and then put in that aluminium ratio into the materials model, and then test it. I think this shearing would vanish in a flash. I don't think really putting a sandwich solid bulk like that in between is the best thing forward, but at least we can now confirm that. Right, if you've not done it sooner, make sure you hit save. That concludes the uh, sample piece for uh, mechanical APDL. If you are doing this for an assignment, I would always, 100% always, recommend that you do it here first, confirm your sample, because you can get data, you can get it quick, you can get it reliable, and with it being answers, you just know that's, that solution's gonna be good. 
Okay, so I'm going to close that. <sighs> well, I would say save everything. Um, right, so that's now closed. So I'm going to go back up. And this is, we're back in here. So, interestingly, um, it's still got a question mark on because technically it's not all saved properly. Um, right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my less research now and go, uh, I'll call this industry. In dust. Right. Um, so let's get into this quick. So I'm going to edit. Comes up quickly. I'm going to enter engineering data source. From my data source, now I'm going to bring this down. Go to composite materials. In my composites materials list, I've got epoxy, carbon fiber, unidirectional, 230 gigapascals. For this sample, let's do that. Um, just to keep it a little bit more similar to what we were looking at before, let's go to general materials. I'm, do, I'm doing a bit of a spin on what we do, on what we normally do. Uh, I'm going to go aluminium alloy because, in essence, that's similar to what we were just running. So I'm going to come back going to drop that and now we have our geometry set up um, I'm going to right click now uh, I should tell you I've already modeled the notes piece so just to make my life easy because hell why not I'm going to use the sample piece that I actually have if I can find where I've put it oh, bummer <laughs> uh, let's have a look Clevis, Clevis block, Clevis strings. Oh no! It. Oh, hang on a minute. That looks like it. So, what I'm going to do is now check the geometry. Uh, it because I said that might be it, but it obviously might not be. Don't forget in this, no solids, all surface. Everything must be surface set. If it's not surface set, it's no good. So um, what I've done is I've gone onto my geometry, I've right clicked, gone into uh, Edit Design Builder, and we're going to go Import because don't forget the lightning bolts there. So I click up Generate, and okay, let me just cancel that. And there it is, the complex, the complicated piece that it is. So that's what we have. Uh, this was just a simple piece and what we're going to do for shits and gigs is we'll do the same layup here and here but we'll put them into compression into tension we'll have a look at the shearing that's occurring and here what I'll do is I'll just make it a, a thick uh, aluminium plate so the carbon will just be up here uh, on the expansion you'll see here it's down as a single part and it is down as uh, thickness inherent and it's no, no thickness to it three faces it's basically it's a surface must keep that in mind if that's what you're doing for an, any project or your uh, final year thesis okay come on come on come on I'm going into the model now so I'm just waiting for it right so it's been brought in so what we can see here is uh, we have an ultimate thickness now I'm going to go three layers same layer structure of what we just had in um, in APDL so I'm going to right click what I want to do is make custom layers though okay custom layers I can choose thicknesses choose point masses new layered section we'll choose this and this we're going to use the same layup on both sides so I'm going to apply on that so we've applied he now wants to know a body mass system. See the body mass generator here. I'm going to use the body, the same one. So drop it down to body coordinate system. Now it wants to know an offset. So for uh, shits and gigs, let's go top. Uh, it's what I did before. There's no bigger. It just depends what you want to do. I was just choosing a different way. And I'm going to go to worksheet. So first things first, I'm going to add a layer, add a layer, and add a layer. Then between here, I'm going to go the epoxy. Here, I'm going to go the aluminium alloy. And here, I'm going to go the epoxy. Thickness, I'm going to go 0 0.001 for one millimeter, because that's about right for the carbon. And I'm going to go same there. So for here, I'm going to give it a 20 mil. So 0 0.02, everything's in meters, don't forget. And even though it makes no difference, I'll go 90 degrees. 
just so you can see the orientation. Issue is here, doesn't give you an orientation layout. I often think even just a little little silly drawing, but you gotta look, that is potentially how it operates. Now if you look, uh, layers are added and decreasing the edge the Z and everything will default itself around the X component. That's just for your own information. Okay, so um, if you come back, light selection, it's going to spin it round. Both elements there are red. This point here is not. What we will do now is we're going to say, right, okay, so everything else we can make it either 20 mil thickness or whatever. So what we'll do is we'll just say it's a 20 mil U bracket plate that's been bent with carbon laid on uh, each side as a sandwich. So I'll go 0 0.02. And then from my structural steel, I'm going to bring it in and go aluminium alloy. So then, let's go update on mesh. Three, two, one, boom. Quite like this. Look at that. You look how it's coming across. I mean, we could tighten this up, which arguably, I think we should. So I think what I'll do is I'm just going to insert yeah. Yes, I know. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to add a refinement on both sides, and then I'm going to set that to... I'll set it to 2, because refinements are quite heavy as far as um, procedures go. And it just gives a bit of that. It, it also maps similar to what we'd seen. Uh, what we might get is an issue here, because you can see where, where the carbon is, 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 in essence, going through the material. So what I might do is go back to my lead selection, see where we've got the offset. Let's go, I'll go mid-plane, do a further refinement, update on the refinement. Let's see what that does. Still not enough. Go back, lead selection, and then I'll go from the top. Oh, did I go from the top last time? I don't remember. Shoot. I did go from the top. So we'll go from the bottom. Go from the bottom. So I'm going to flip it right down, go to the bottom. And then what we'll do, there you go. Now, it's it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, I know. And everybody will sit there and go, okay, no, what's that shit? Um, but it allows us to do the test that we're going to do. Uh, again, refinement is important. It is important. But because we're looking at you bracket, I'm pretty confident in what we're going to be doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fixed support. Multiple choices. I can fix the plate if I wish. Or I can fix the edging. Because we talk about, let's say that this plate's held down. I'll click that. So I'm going to go with that. I'm happy with that. Then we have another aspect to add on. So I'm going to right click, go insert. I'm going to go force. Now, if I click here, it's going to go on the face. Not what I'm after. So I'm going to go to the vertex on the edge. Click apply. And I'm going to go by component. And in my Y, I'm going to go minus 2,500. Again, same values that we had before. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go duplicate. Choose a different edge, this edge. I'm going to click apply. And then I'm going to add my 2,500. Then solve. Now look at this, the time it's taking. I say the time it's taking, it's done. Uh, Right, so let's do the same thing again. I'm going to right click, insert. I'm going to go stress. I'm going to go shear. We've got X, Y plane. So I tell you what, let's let's go through them systematically. So I'm going to go evaluate results. Oh, oh, look at that. X, Y. So this is just in these components. We have a large concentration between these two points, compression and intention, but we set them to be like that, don't forget. You look at the variation over the two. Look at the difference, just a slight difference in between it. Um, shearing is occurring, as you'd imagine. Um, what I want to do, though, is I'm going to look at my XZ. Just curious. So then let's just uh, recapture. Yes, oh, look at that. Now, like any material, when it's point to tension or compression, when they're happening, what will actually happen is you'll get this delamination where it starts to bend, deflects. 
So the aluminium structure on the inside is actually bending. As it bends, it pushes against the material and it's actually causing this process to happen. Um, really, I should start to refine a little bit more, but it gives me an insight as to shearing that's occurring. I mean, we're looking, we are looking at barely anything as far as that goes. So it, it is attempting, but it's not enough to cause failure. So let's go YZ. I think the XY is the bigger. So let's evaluate on there. I mean, it's, it's getting higher, getting higher. So this is the uh, YZ. So around this area, so we have this concentration here, as you'd imagine. So it, it deflects, and then like two pieces of paper glued together, they attempt, if they're deflected and bent, what they attempt to do is to push each, each other apart. So it is trying to do it, but not enough to be a considerable um, impact. So that's uh, one, let's have a look, one mega, one mega Pascal. So it's got X, Y. Run that again. I, I forgot to look at the result that we got. Yeah, so you look there. We still up to the minus 10 of Pascal. So this is practically at nothing. So interestingly, our biggest impact on this comes from the... I think we were YZ, weren't we? We were on YZ? We were on YZ. The YZ component. Let's just check it to see how it deflects as it moves. Look at that though. This is actually into compression and tension. Well, the shearing aspect occurs on both. Hmm. So let's go deformation. I just want to look at. I'm going to go total on this case. I just want to see where it's moving and how much it's moved by. <sighs> Not much, in short. Um, yeah, that's an interesting one, is that? Uh, again, this does strengthen the idea of if you're going to use sandwich, if you're going to use composite, you need, if you're going to use a, an, an isotropic material, you need something that's going to complement the orthotropic material. You can't just jam them together and say that it's going to be super strong. I honestly think that um, this really does strengthen the idea of your honeycomb internal structures, why the honeycomb internal structure is so good. If you want further... Um, further uh, insight to the honeycomb structure again if any of you know Justin speak to Justin some of his work over the years was purely about the honeycomb structure and the some of the some of the stuff he does on as far as the internal core structures go it's like Gandalf stuff it's really worth really worth speaking to him about for me um, that is not the strongest sign of things going on but for me the strong stuff that I'm interested in is in our next set of notes which which is the explicit dynamics things moving in space and collisions sounds really dark of me but collisions so if you've not done already make sure you hit save this has been the carbon fiber notes this is me going through it I've thrown a little bit of extra things in there things that are different different from the notes take a look see what you think if you have any issues please don't please please i was almost said please don't come and see me um please come and see me uh, drop me an email uh I turn up at the door and i will try and answer the problems that you have uh for anything else let me know and i will see you all very soon